I constantly look for interesting priming opportunities. So I saw this in a clothing store. No, now, if you've ever gone to a clothing store, you usually have two racks. You have the no and the yes. Well, they said it's absolutely and possibly a nice way to prime you into open-mindedness. When you're going through your process with your clients, when you're sitting down with people in a meeting, is there ways that you can shape the experience to be more open-minded? I had a problem in my lab where people were writing really illegibly, and I couldn't read any of their forms, and so I changed every pen in our lab to say, your handwriting is perfectly legible, and all of our forms became instantly easier to read. I worked with a nonprofit where we thought about how could we use priming to help people feel like they want to donate more. And the biggest problem that they had was people felt like, oh, small amounts weren't good enough. So they wouldn't give small amounts. Here's set one that we tested. Would you be willing to help by giving a donation? Versus set two. Would you be willing to help by giving a donation? Every penny will help. Just that one extra sentence. 28% donations versus 50% donations. Our words are so powerful. They've also found that just using more in-group pronouns like us, we, and our increase positive feelings. And that's because as humans, we are constantly looking for belonging. Our biggest worry in every interaction is, do they like me? Are they on my side? If we let our words reflect that feeling of oneness, people feel more comfortable with us. They're more excited to work with us. They tell us what's really on their mind. So here's my very first challenge. I'm gonna issue a couple different challenges today. After, this key, after the party, let's talk about after the party. After this keynote, after the party, open your sent email folder and pull up a recent message to a client. I want you to do a couple things. Print it out and underline all the positive words you use. Circle any time you mention we are and us. And count how many warm versus competent words you're using. If you want to know how you're coming across to people, this is how you can check the first impression you're giving off. I believe that every interaction is an opportunity. An opportunity to infect people for good. And I do this in everything. Every single slide in this presentation is either warm or competent, and I have a perfect balance of both. If you go on my Instagram account, you'll notice that I have a warm image and then a competent image and then a warm image and then a competent image, because I want to make sure that even my social comes across as warm and welcoming, but also powerful and capable. I want you to think about how can you prime more? Your emails, your marketing materials, your social profiles, your LinkedIn, your invites, your website, your calls, your can responses. Every single time someone interacts with something you touch, that becomes a part of your brand. The second aspect of this, the more advanced aspect, is using this to set people up for success. So this is a really interesting study that was done with room service waiters. Here's what they did. They had two different groups of room service waiters in this hotel. The very first group walked up to someone's door, knocked on the door, and said, hello, here's your breakfast, and handed them their breakfast tray. In the second group, they had the waiters walk up to the door, knock on the door, and say, hello, what nice weather we're having. Here is your breakfast tray. One throwaway comment about the weather. They found that the waiters who used the word nice got a 27% higher tip. That's crazy. Researchers think this is because even though we don't think about our opening lines or talking about the weather, that one word nice actually primed people to think about being more nice. 